Welcome to the orientation for Earth Life Science course and thank you for watching this movie. The orientation is made up with two sessions. One is the YouTube session that you are now watching. The other is online session that will be held soon. To join this online session, you need a registration. If you haven't yet, please visit this website and please make a registration. In this YouTube session, we will start from Greetings by LC Director and then overview our LC course and make a presentation of research activities by each PI and API. Finally, we will explain the application process and entrance examination. Okay, let's start with greetings by LC Director Yasuhito Sekine. Uh, I'm Yasu Sekine, of, uh, Director of LC, Arts Life Science Institute. And I'd like to uh, say thanks all of the, the attendants of, to the webinar of our uh, graduate school course. So I'd like to briefly introduce about our institute, LC. So LC was established about 10 years ago as uh, one of the, the world premier international research center initiatives. So this is uh, a kind of the, the Japanese government's the project on the research and the interaction with the international research institutes. And this WPI uh, Research Center Initiatives aims to construct a research center with the world leading scientists and the top level research environment. And uh, the WPI Research Center Initiative should be a visible research center in Japan from the world. So the, among the about 13th or 14th WPI Research Centers, the LC is the unique institute which aims to uh, understand or investigate the origins of Earth and life on Earth. So in the last 10 years, the, we promote the interdis interdisciplinary researches on the origins of Earth and life. And then we try to do the top level science and we try to do the fusion uh, of the existing discipline to construct a new type of this sprint uh, to rebuild the origin of Earth and life. And also we promote, uh, strongly promote the, the globalization of the institutes. And also we try to do the reform of Japanese university systems. So in the last 10 years, we try to more fo uh, focus on the origin of Earth and life. And in the next decades, uh, we will uh, try to do or try to investigate the possibility of extraterrestrial life beyond the Earth uh, in collaboration with some space missions. So in the LC, after the, the 10 years of establishment, the LC already launched the education program, which is called the LC course or Earth Life Science course within our institutes, our institutes I mean, the Tokyo Tech. So the, this is the, the very unique education program of astrobiology. And uh, you will be able to hear about the details of, of our uh, education programs later by Professor Nakamura and uh, Professor Matsura. So anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, welcome all of you and uh, also appreciate for joining this webinar. Okay, thank you, Yasu. Now, uh, let's move on to the overview of LC course. Yuhei Nakamura-san. Uh, okay, hello everyone. I'm Yuhei Nakamura, one of the faculty member of LC course. So uh, here I'd like to uh, take a couple of slides to introduce or talk about a brief overview of LC grad course. And first about philosophy of LC course. 
uh, philosophy of LC course is to challenge the fundamental question of arts and life science. And we would like to foster the student who wish to tackle the fundamental question in natural science, such as origin and evolution of living planet. And at the same time, we'd like to foster the student who are able to solve the global issues such as environment, climate, water, and resources that are, of course, essential to our long-term survival. So with this motivation in mind, uh, LC course set five unique features. So let me explain the five unique features one by one. And the first unique feature of our LC course is, is this is a combined uh, integrated master's and doctor program with financial support as salary. Because this is a five-year uh, project, the students are able to tackle the uh, difficult but fundamental question with a long-term perspective. And also we'd like to offer you a financial support up to five years, about 170,000 Japanese yen per month. And regarding the enrollment fee and tuition fee, our students are required to pay enrollment fee and tuition fee for the first semester shown here. Uh, however, a tuition fee for the second semester and subsequent semester can be waived upon application and approval. And a second unique feature of LC course is, like uh, Professor Sekine explained, uh, there is interdisciplinary research across earth planetary science, biology, and chemistry. So as you will see from individual introduction, uh, uh, research activity introduction from API and API, a student in LC are highly, highly encouraged to collaborate with multiple PIs and API, having a different research background, uh, including biology and chemistry, planetary science. And third feature, unique feature of LC course is, uh, we'd like to offer you the world reading uh, research environment. So students joining our LC course will study in highly interdisciplinary and international environment, which was established, uh, uh, second, uh, Professor Sekine mentioned under the World Premium Research Center Program, WPI. So we really would like to share such a world-class cutting edge research environment to all of you. And that institute, our institute located at the central area of Tokyo, Okama campus. And a fourth unique feature of LC course is the education in a highly international environment. And approximately half of the uh, member are uh, non-Japanese, and official language is English. And all lecture, classes, and uh, thesis presentation and uh, scientific discussion will, will be done in English. And as you will see today, uh, many of faculty members are English native. That's why uh, you are able to experience a highly international research environment while staying talking in Japan. And the last one is uh, uh, not only uh, working on the fundamental question, but also uh, we like to encourage students to collaborate with companies. I mean, a student are able to join internship in company uh, which are involved in the environmental, energy, and a space business to learn how to set and solve the social problems. So we believe this kind of curriculum enable to create diversity in the student career path after obtaining a, a doctoral degree. Okay, so that all about the brief uh, overview of LC course. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Ryuhei. Next, we have the introduction of research activities by each PIs and APIs. In our LC, we have nine PIs, principal investigators, listed on the left side. 
and eight APIs, associated PIs, listed on the right side. Only PIs can be your official supervisor, but we encourage you to work with APIs. Okay, let's start with Yasuhito Sekine Labo. Uh, I'm Yasu Sekine, PI of LC. Um, is your life beyond the earth in the solar system? This is the fundamental questions we have been tackling uh, in the last several years. So according to the recent advances in the spacecraft explorations, we now know that there are multiple habitable planet or habitable satellite in our solar system in terms of the presence of liquid water, organic materials, and also chemical energy. So the, according to the recent Mars explorations, we have known that there are body network create minerals and the sediment on the surface of, our, of, of Mars. And currently, the Mars rovers have been rovering on the surface of ancient lake sediment and collect the sample rock to analyze its chemical and the mineralogical composition to rebuild the habitability of this planet. And in the outer solar system, uh, there are multiple geologically active uh, icy ocean worlds uh, where the subsurface ocean exists beneath the icy uh, class, icy surface. So spacecraft now did the in situ analysis for the crew materials erupting from the subsurface ocean and analyzed its chemical composition to reveal whether the subsurface ocean environment is really habitable for life. So in my laboratory, the, the main research methodology is laboratory experiments in which we try to reproduce the physical and the chemical conditions like uh, temperature, pressures, and radiations uh, on the planet and satellite and to see, the, to understand the chemical reactions and the geophysical processes possibly occurred on these uh, planetary bodies. And we try to compare the, the results with the space exploration. And in the collaboration with field geologists and uh, also the synthetic biologists, we try to do the new uh, researches like uh, uh, to predict the potential biomarker in the planetary body and also we try to do the field work uh, to the terrestrial analog field of Mars and I see planetary bodies. So I have been involved in the several uh, space missions, international space missions, which include the International Mars Ice Mopper, induced Jupiter Icy Moon Explorers by, NASA, by ESA, and also Dragonfly mission to Titan, led by NASA. So if you, you're interested in these uh, international space explorations, then I also welcome you. So the now country, we have almost 10 students plus one postdocs and uh, we welcome uh, you to join our group. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Hidenori Genda. I'm one of the PIs here in LC. My research interest is to understand how wide varieties of solar system bodies, like planets, satellites, and asteroids, formed. For example, I really want to know why our Earth has oceans, but Venus doesn't. Why sizes of planets are so different? Why our Earth has a big moon, but Mars has two small moons? What the very early Earth looked like? Our group is investigating those fundamental questions. Through these researches, I want to know the universality and uniqueness of our Earth, and ultimately, I want to know how and why our Earth got the environment where life emerged and evolved. In my lab, we are solving various processes 
in which planetary bodies form and evolve, mainly by using computer simulations. This animation is an example of our simulation results, which is showing a giant impact during our Earth's formation. In addition to these computer simulations, I am involved in some planetary exploration missions in order to test the hypothesis that we made in our simulations. Also, we are collaborating with many researchers who have a different uh, background and fields. Now, I am working with eight students in my lab. Each student has wide and different topics that they are interested in. If you are interested in my lab, uh, let's talk at the upcoming online webinar. Thank you. So my uh, research group is interested in how uh, planets evolve and how they're shaped by dynamical processes that happen uh, through the entire planet. And this includes processes from the center, including uh, the cores of planets, how magnetic fields are generated, to mantle convection in the rocky parts of the planets, plate tectonics, volcanism, as well as the evolution of the surface environment. So what we're trying to do is look at planets and uh, have a deeper view of the interior uh, to understand how these planets are working, uh, how they're exchanging matter throughout the, the entire uh, system. And it's a very much a, a system science approach that involves the, the entire planet from the, the center to the uh, surface environment. Um, to do this, we use models, and uh, in my group, we use both forward and inverse models. So forward models are uh, simulations. So we will simulate mental convection and uh, plate tectonics and, and uh, things like that using computers, uh, similar to what uh, Genda-san's group does. And, uh, but we'll also do inverse models where we'll collect data, such as seismological data, gravity, or geomagnetic data, and we'll uh, also use models to invert for the properties of the interior of the planet. And our goal is to understand how the planets behave as a complex system uh, from their formation to uh, through history, and how this couples then with the biosphere, the emergence of a biosphere, which is a part of the geological system in, in our view. So that's uh, all for my side. Hello, everyone. This is Takanori Kodama, one of LC APIs. My laboratory just started since last October. My biggest question is, what is the Earth? This question is a general question related with not only a science, but also various science subjects, which include astronomy and astrobiology. Our laboratory tries to understand this question based on planetary climate system. The climate system consists with several sub subsystems, which include atmosphere, ocean, continent, and ice sea. For example, clouds play a significant role on the climate, and atmospheric and ocean circulation tra uh, transport water and in energy. Distribution of continent controls ocean current, planetary albedo, and evaporation rate of water vapor. Ice sheet has higher planetary albedo, as you know, and important effect as storage of liquid water. So, planetary surface environment is a result from climate system. My research key questions are what kind of climate system does the planet have? and what is a habitable condition. Additionally, what did and will happen as a result of climate system change? In the climate system, there are many physical processes, which include radiation process, atmospheric and ocean circulation, 
and precipitation and so on. Actually, they have various different time scales. We model these systems numerically and develop three-dimensional global climate model. Depending on science topic, we use different models. Recently, we started to develop a couple atmosphere, ocean, global climate model and global crowd resolving model to apply to different environments with the Earth. Thanks to computer resources, we gradually access to supercomputer like Fugaku and our simulator 4 at JAMASTEC to run our simulation. Our research topic are climate and habitability of extraterrestrial planet like TRAPPIST-1 system and, and solar, si solar system planet and moons. I mean our Mars and our Venus climate and subsurface uh, ocean on um, icy moons. And also we studied parallel climate event like snowball state and also mass extinction which destroyed the dinosaur world, for example. Uh, there are many open questions in my laboratories. If you are interested in our research and our research topic, please contact me. Thank you for listening. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Ryuhei Nakamura, a PI of LC course. So here in our laboratory, we set the question, how did geochemistry become biology? In other words, we are really interested in the integrating geology and biology in a context of uh, chemical origin of life. And to fill the gap between geology and biology, we are using our strong scientific uh, knowledge and background, which is uh, material science and catalytic chemistry with a member listed here and also a number of collaborators inside and outside LC. And to fill the gap between geology and biology, currently we are working mainly on the two subjects. Uh, Gendo-san, could you go to the next slide? Yeah, first subject we are working is the energy to drive catalysis in a similar manner to biology. So as you may know, uh, electrochemical gradient across a cellular membrane is likely uh, universal for all domain of life. And a very similar energy conversion processes are taking place at deep sea uh, hydrothermal environment shown here, uh, where uh, delta pH, delta T or ion gradient are converted into the electrical energy so in this project, uh, by applying the advanced knowledge of material science, we are trying to understand as much as possible the similarity between the energy conversion process in a modern biological cellular system and energy conversion processes at the hydrothermal vent system. Uh, okay, uh, uh, can I go to next? And, uh, uh, Next uh, main subject we are working in the proto-metabolism driven by the mineral catalyst. In this project, we are exploring the uh, mineral as a, a catalyst which have a similar function with a metal enzyme in modern biology. And for instance, by exploring uh, metal sulfide as a pre-enzymatic catalyst, we demonstrate a CO2 reduction and a fixation shown here. And recently we are working very hard on the nitrogen cycle shown in the right part of this slide, where we uh, demonstrate some part of a nitrogen cycle using a metal oxide and metal sulfide mineral coupled with a, a disequilibrium provided by the geological con uh, uh, setting. So, the, one of the ultimate goal of this kind of project is to integrate carbon metabolism and nitrogen metabolism to make a carbon nitrogen compound, which become a building block for a peptide DNA and RNA. 
So if you are interested in this kind of approach to address the question of chemical origin of life, uh, please come to my uh, breakout room and have a discussion. So thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is Yang Meili. I started my lab at LC since this April. Here are my research interests. Regarding origin of life, we want to understand how were life's building blocks generated and distributed in our solar system bodies. And for this purpose, we are specifically working on the mineral catalysis as a way to understand how the life's building blocks were synthesized efficiently. And also, we have been applying a new reaction mechanism that is electrochemistry in geochemical and cosmochemical context as a way to understand the reaction mechanisms that may have shaped the chemical evolution of solar system bodies. Uh, as for the origin of life on the early Earth through the chemical evolution, we have uh, tried to understand how and where life's building blocks can be generated on the early Earth and what is the relevance between the geocatalyst and biocatalyst in terms of the catalyzing the synthesis of life speeding blocks. And also, I think some of you may know that uh, actually life speeding blocks are widely distributed in our solar system, uh, such as um, the meteorites, comets, and asteroids. They all contain amino acids. And now the questions are, what are the mechanisms of synthesis and breakdown of life speeding blocks in these outer solar system bodies? And what is the relevance between um, the cosmochemistry uh, to the origin of life? For studying this uh, project, we have taken uh, multiple approaches. First, we establish a geochemical model based on geological constraints, and then we uh, using integrated methods and spectroscopic uh, methods to try to understand the reaction mechanisms. And in the future, we will also try to study the natural samples as the target to get kinetic information, uh, which can be combined with the physical modeling. We have several collaborations with NLC and outside of LC, and these researchers are coming from different disciplines. and. I am currently working with uh, my technician, Yuko Nakano, who supported my experiments. And you are very welcome for a discussion and joining our group. If you have interest in any of these research topics, please uh, contact me by this email. Hi, my name is Harrison Smith. I'm a specially appointed associate professor here at LC. Um, my research themes revolve around the origin, evolution, organization, and detectability of life. So the key questions that kind of come from that have to do with how to distinguish living and non-living systems. For example, you can represent living, non-living systems, chemistry and biochemistry using networks and ask questions about how those networks look topologically and scale over time. How do you look for life outside of Earth? So these have to do with questions of what are the best techniques to look for life outside of Earth in a reliable fashion. Um, and relates to the previous question because you can ask questions about how hard is it to distinguish planets which have biospheres and planets which don't have biospheres. And then what was the evolutionary trajectory of the biosphere um, and biochemistry overall and what constraints guided that evolution? So I'm investigating this by looking at kind of the history of, of reactions and metabolism and how those change over time. Um, a little bit about me as an aside, I have a BS in physics and astrophysics from the University of Michigan, did some cosmology research, brief stint as a, an engineer at NASA, um, did my PhD in astrobiology with Sarah Walker at ASU, and then I joined LC as a research scientist, and I started as a specially appointed associate professor this year. Um, I'm also affiliated scientist at Blue Marble. So the kind of methodologies and techniques that I use are all computational, having to do with bioinformatics, for example, pulling uh, information from these biochemical databases online, um, layering on things like thermodynamics, uh, applying complex system science approaches, so network analyses, information theory, Bayesian probability theory, agent-based modeling, et cetera, um, representing things as networks or, or doing, again, things like agent-based modeling. And these can be static or dynamic approaches. So we can talk about doing kind of topological um, and scaling techniques, but we can also talk about running simulations and looking at time series. Um, so with that, m my brief uh, introduction is over and I ask what interests you. So if you've read any papers, 
I don't know, interesting, had thought experiments or research ideas that were provoked by those papers, uh, please feel free to let me know if you're interested in, in collaborating. Um, the kind of skills that I use and that you would learn and develop here are related to programming, data analysis, and statistics. And again, thanks a lot, and reach out by email if you have any questions about working together with the program. Hi, I'm Sean McLean, one of the professors at ELSI of Tokyo Tech. Thanks for coming to the video link today to learn about the laboratory. At LC, the PIs are all interested in understanding how do planets make life. So this is a really diverse area of research. And in my own laboratory, we're focusing on these three questions that I've listed here. How, does, how did life begin? What, are the his, what is the history of life on Earth? And what are the limits of life on Earth? We can also think about these questions in the context of other planets, which is also fun for us to do. In the group, uh, we research microbial diversity. We study the evolution of microbes and the evolution of proteins in their genomes. And we also employ techniques uh, from single cell physiology. So we use a technique called nanosims to study the incorporation of nutrients into the individual cells. Here we can see a consortia of archaea and bacteria where an isotope labeling experiment was conducted. You could find out which cells are eating the most from natural environments. We also perform chemistry experiments in the laboratory. Here is a picture of a thioacetate molecule, potentially a prebiotic relevant molecule, being converted into a thioester, one of the fundamental molecules that we find in metabolism today. We're interested in how these molecules, like thioesters and also other esters with a high group transfer potential, could be uh, the driving force for polymerization to form molecules like the short peptide, short shown here. We also study enzyme evolution using bioinformatics approaches and also biochemistry experiments or purify proteins and study them in the laboratory. We focus on enzymes, uh, metalloenzymes, and also uh, have an area of research where we're investigating enzyme-specific isotope effects, where the goal is to link uh, enzyme evolution, our knowledge of enzyme evolution, to the sedimentary rock record using, uh, uh, by linking enzyme isotope effects with molecular phylogeny. On this slide here, I've listed some of the key papers um, that I've been involved in over the year that illustrate uh, my current and kind of long-standing interests, and I'd like to point them out to you and in hopes that we might be able to brainstorm together about uh, interesting possibilities uh, for your uh, PhD and master's course research. Feel free to contact me, and if you do, I'd like uh, to know what do you think is the most interesting paper you've read recently, why, why was it important, what might be next, and from my own publications, not only these ones listed here, which ones have you read and why? I'm also curious to know about which tools and techniques you're interested in learning. And I welcome your uh, contact, so please feel free to get in touch. Thanks for your interest. Hi, I'm Liam Longo, a specially appointed associate professor here at ELSI. In my group, we are interested in the evolution of biological complexity, and we take inspiration from a quote by Darwin. From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. To uncover these simple origins and their connection to life today, we use a combination of experimental and computational approaches. Here are some selected publications from the last couple years. Because time is short, I will introduce you to two key questions that my lab is working on to give you a sense of the type of research that we do. In the first project, my group tries to understand how ancient geochemistry gave way to modern biochemistry. What I am showing you here is a computational approach that explores the evolution of biochemistry. In this trajectory, the reaction network is being built out step by step as new compounds are being discovered. Approaches like this can help us understand where forgotten or missing biochemical reactions may be hiding. I've been captivated by protein structure since I was a graduate student. In my lab, we try to understand where complex molecular structures, like the one shown here, came from. To our surprise, we found that structures like these may have come from ancient peptides that form tiny droplets when mixed with RNA. 
this work reveals unexpected transitions in protein evolution. Finally, I'd like to tell you what skills you can learn in the Longo Lab. Content-wise, we integrate biophysics, biochemistry, and bioinformatics. In addition, we put a very strong emphasis on effective writing and communication. There are several open projects in my lab, so if questions like these sound interesting to you, please stop by my breakout room and we can discuss more. Bye, everyone. Hello, my name is Kosuke Fujishima, one of the LCPI members. The scientific question that I'm interested in is where did functional biopolymers came from? As you may already know, on Earth, Life uses specific type of biopolymers, such as DNA and RNA, consist of nucleotide, which is responsible for storing genetic information and also replication. Whereas amino acid polymers, known as protein, is capable of running different chemical reactions. However, we still don't know how did these polymers arose on early Earth environment, nor whether these polymers also exist on other planetary bodies, such as Mars, or on icy moons. Therefore, we are currently using synthetic biology approach to tackle such origin of life questions. For example, we are currently de developing a method called messenger RNA display, which allows us to create a large library of new and primordial proteins inside the test tube. We are especially interested in the interaction of these proteins with RNA in order to understand their early interactions. We are also searching novel functional proteins from nature. We also engineer extant proteins to improve their original functions in order to understand the protein's evolvability. Here, in this movie, you're seeing a robotic system which is capable to run a chemical evolution type experiment simulating the hydrothermal vent. You are interested in the phosphorylation reaction that can create nucleotides. You will also learn how to analyze these key biological compounds using, using LC's analytical instruments, such as liquid chromatography and mass spectroscopy. My lab members is very diverse. We have Japanese and also international students, staff, and researchers, just like other LC research groups. I am also collaborating with very talented researchers from around the world, as shown on the right side. If you're interested in joining my lab, please contact fuji at lc.jp. We all look forward to talk to you soon. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Tony Ja. Uh, I'm an API at LC. I became one in uh, April, like uh, some of the other APIs here. And before that, I was a lab manager of the chemistry unit. And I actually came to LC in 2017. Uh, before that, I studied completely in the US. And so here at LC, we're interested in a lot of different questions related to primitive chemistries and how these primitive chemistries could have assembled into something you know, relevant or functional that could have supported the origin of life. And so some of the questions that we're interested in uh, are shown up here. And one of the most interesting questions that we are working on is, you know, there are many different ways that biomolecules could have uh, emerged on early earth, for example, through extraterrestrial means, through mineral surface interactions, through hydrothermal vents. At the same time, a large number of non-biomolecules, if you will, also um, could have emerged. And so what might be interesting is that perhaps these non-biomolecules could have you know, assembled into something relevant for the origin of life by themselves or in um, com combination with various biomolecules. So to that end, there are a number of different topics that we study, including but not limited to, for example, um, you know, polyester synthesis through dehydration, rehydration, kind of pure prebiotic chemistry, um, membraneless protocell assembly, kind of studying chirality and effects on primitive polymerization and other, you know, membraneless self-assembled structures like, you know, DNA, liquid crystal coacervates. 
Uh, next slide, please. And so just uh, as a little flavor of the different things we work on, here are some of our recent publications, which include, you know, some prebiotic chemistry, some um, more biophysics related work. And so uh, if you're interested, please take a look at those. And we also work with a lot of different um, researchers, both within Japan, within Asia, uh, and other countries, Europe and North America, too. So if you're interested in studying, you know, prebiotic chemistry, if you're interested in studying how primitive chemistries could assemble into um, primitive uh, compartments or other self-assembled structures, uh, please come and uh, we, we can chat a little bit later. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Tomo Matsuda. Um, I hope you hear me. Uh, we're working uh, in the field called bottom-up synthetic biology, and the final goal is to understand the emergence and evolution of living system. And so um, we're using, um, uh, we're doing experiments in the lab to understand the emergence and evolution of the living system. So can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, as most of you know, the modern cells are very complex and really sophisticated. But it's very hard to believe that uh, this kind of um, things has uh, appeared all of a sudden, and it's more reasonable to think that it started from much simpler chemicals like ammonia, CO2, or whatever, whatever, and has evolved to more complex molecules like building blocks, namely uh, amino acids or nucleotides, something or um, and amino acids, enzymes, and then went to more complex to something like protocell and then evolved to a modern cell. And I think this is, I think most of the people uh, in the, in um, at least if they are working in, in the field of science, believe this kind of scenario that it has become, uh, the life has started from simple and then became more complex. So how can we prove that, um, um, that this scenario is true or what kind of scenario is possible? And so many people are working on this topic because it's so interesting. And the, 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 the main concept is that is written on the bottom of the slide, that if we can mimic this process in the laboratory, it shows one possible route for the origins of biomolecules, cells, or life. And in particular, um, we, in our group, we're working on this um, white boxed place where we used um, biomolecules to create protocells. And we're asking whether we can make a cell-like structure from scratch in the lab. So can you go to the next slide? Thank you. So this is the last slide. More precisely speaking, we work with uh, small chemicals, nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids that are from uh, the, the living cells. And also, we also work with use um, synthetic molecules too, to, um, to construct uh, so-called artificial cell or synthetic cell or protocell, whatever you wanna call. Um, these are um, made from these building blocks. And on the right, these are the, um, the artificial cells which we have created. Um, unfortunately, um, the movies don't move. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It's all stopped at zero second and, and will never move, but it's supposed to be show a very uh, funny dynamics, but oh, that's okay. And by using um, this approach and creating this kind of artificial cell, we try to answer the question uh, questions such as how does compartment size affects the, the reactions inside, or how can we give the evolvability to the artificial cells and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in this kind of approach, uh, please feel free to contact me and uh, we can talk uh, at the um, uh, afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, I am Naohiro Terasaka on API in LC. My group started last June and the current member is me and Dr. Tajimer who is a postdoc and one PhD co-student will join coming April. Our research question is how functional molecules and life emerged in ancient Earths. And can we make artificial molecules surpassing natural molecules? 
To answer these questions, we are focusing directed evolution of biomolecules by synthetic biology approaches. Directed evolution is a method mimicking natural Darwinian evolution. In principle, firstly, we prepare parent gene and make library containing various sequence by diversifying parent gene. Then selecting improved functional molecules and convert the sequence information to DNA. By repeating this cycle, we can create artificially evolved molecules with enhanced activity. Our research topics can be categorized to three topics, artificial cell, primitive translation, and synthetic biology. During last decades, it became possible that homogeneous picolitter emulsion is easily prepared and have been applied for fluorescent base sorting machine by microfluidics technology. We are trying to apply these techniques to make artificial cell and organelle to develop new type of directed evolution. Second topic is primitive translation project. As you may know, RNA is considered as first functional biomolecules in ancient Earth. We are working on catalytic RNA ribozyme, especially on aminoacylation reaction, to develop primitive translation system and genetic code reprogramming techniques to utilize non canonical amino acids. The third topic is synthetic virology. We recently evolved bacterial protein to virus like protein capsule packaging RNA. We are trying to develop more functional virus like structures to shed light on origin of virus research and virus alternative technology development. For more details, please contact me afterwards. Thank you for listening. Hello, uh, my name is Nathaniel Virgo. I do mostly theoretical research on the origin of life and related subjects, uh, and I believe that uh, theory can help us answer some of the most fundamental questions in our field. Some of the questions I'm most interested in are, how did we get from chemistry to biology? Uh, how did evolution itself evolve? And what does it mean for something to be an agent? What does it mean for something to be trying to reach towards a goal? Uh, and I like to answer these questions uh, through techniques, including um, computer programming, simulation of things that are not alive, but maybe have some of the properties of life, uh, and of course, mathematics and, te and physics. And so if you think you might be interested in questions such as uh, how can chemical systems self-organize over time into something a bit more like biology, or how can we use simple models to understand fundamental questions about evolution or the origin of life? Or even how can we use these ideas to come up with novel machine learning algorithms? Or perhaps if you're just interested in learning more about mathematical techniques such as information theory, Bayesian probability theory or category theory that we use to think about agency, uh, then feel free to, to drop in and say hello. All right. Thank you for the presentations uh, by HPI and API. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, last topic, uh, application process and entrance examination. Okay, let me explain the processes of application and entrance examination briefly. For details, please visit these links below and check the details by yourself. This is very important. One is the LC course web page and the other is the official website of the International Graduate Program that we call IGPC. You will be able to find the PDF document of the application guide for IGPC which will be uploaded soon. You can find those links in the description down below this movie. So please visit those websites later. Okay, let me start with enrollment capacity, which is limited to about five students in this selection process. This is the most important information for you. Next schedules. We will have an orientation webinar January 19th. The most important deadline is the deadline for application, which is not determined yet officially, but it is going to be mid-April. Before the deadline for application, you need to submit a consent letter. The deadline is about one week before the deadline for application. 
to get the consent letter, you should contact LCPIs and also APIs if necessary and discuss your research interests and your research plans with PIs and APIs. When you decide who you want to work with, you will show your interest to only one LCPI. And then you may get a consent letter from one PI. So you need to express your interest to one LCPI by around March. Okay, after you submit everything, you will have an interview late April or early May. This interview is the entrance exam. After that, you will get to know the result mid-June. When you look at the official application guide, you will find the schedule and the detailed information. I'm showing the previous version here, but the new version will be uploaded in mid-August. This says contact uh, PIs and get consent letter. Submission will be done through online. Here you can find the words written examination, but for LC course, you will not have written examination, only interview. Okay, about consent letter, you will start contacting multiple PIs and APIs listed here. You will discuss with them and decide who you want to work with. Then, you will show your interest to only one PI. And then, you will obtain one consent letter from one PI. Only PI can send you a consent letter. Also, because of the enrollment capacity, you may not be able to obtain a consent letter. Okay, let me explain admission screening. LC course is an interdisciplinary course under these three departments. Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences, we call EPS. Department of Life Science and Technology, we call LST. And Department of Chemical Science and Engineering, we call CSE. So you will apply for LC course through either EPS or LST or CSE, depending on PI's affiliation. We are LC PIs, but at the same time we are belonging to one department. For example, uh, I am belonging to EPS department. Admission screening process is a bit different among those departments. Applica applicants via EPS will have an interview selection. That's it. Applicants via LST or CSE will be evaluated based on your scores, grades, and so on. And then those with appropriate marks will proceed to an interview selection. Interview will be held online. We will use Zoom. First, you will make a 5 to 10 minute presentation by sharing your slides. After that, you will have 30 to 35 minute uh, Q&A time. The interview will be done in English. Your presentation should include how your background led you to apply for the LC course and what kind of research you want to do at LC. We will ask many questions. Some are related to your presentation and some are not directly related to your presentation. We also often ask you some basic knowledge 
in your major, which you studied at your university, because I want to be sure that you studied very well. Okay, that's all about application and entrance examination. Thank you. Okay, we are almost finishing the YouTube session. We will have an online session soon, which you need to register. In online session, you can ask us any questions about our LC course, entrance exam, and so on. We will try to answer those questions as much as possible. After the Q&A session, we will have Zoom breakout room. You can join each room and discuss with us directly. Okay, that's all for today. We are looking forward to seeing you on upcoming online session. Thank you.